The chandelle, a French term coined during World War I, described a steep climbing turn in air combat used to reverse course and gain better positioning. Literally, it means candle, or the full phrase, monte en chandelle, translates to climb vertically. The evolution of this maneuver would eventually lead to the combat or aerobatic maneuver known as the Immelman, a vertical course reversal with no turning, and that's of course once aircraft became more capable. Evaluating a pure tactical maneuver becomes highly subjective, so standards and guidelines evolved to define the chandelle as the current proficiency maneuver required of commercial pilots. Specifically, the modern chandelle is a 180 degree climbing turn started at near cruise speed and ending after a maximum performance climb at minimum controllable speed. Commercial maneuvers are not always directly applicable to what one would deem the standard commercial flight. However, they demand smoothness of control, control coordination, energy management, and overall mastery of the aircraft. These are all skills and qualities that define a professional commercial pilot. Unlike maneuvers such as steep turns, the commercial chandelle does not involve sustained G maneuvering. Careful energy management and situational awareness determine the successful outcome of the chandelle. The objective of practicing and performing the chandelle is to develop the pilot's coordination, orientation, planning, and accuracy of control during maximum performance flight. Before starting any maneuver, ensure that the aircraft is at a safe altitude to meet the MRA of 1,500 feet AGL during a dual flight or 2,000 feet AGL during a solo flight. Once a safe altitude is assured, clear the practice area by making practice area radio calls and visually clear any traffic conflicts by making two 90 degree clearing turns. This is a climbing and course reversing maneuver, so don't forget to check behind and above your aircraft. Adjust power and trim to 105 knots. Keep in mind, at higher density altitudes, a slower speed may be needed. The pilot must also note ground references, such as roads or prominent landmarks, to determine the position and progress throughout the maneuver. Especially critical is determining the 90 degree point, as this is where control emphasis changes from maintaining constant bank to maintaining constant pitch. Once these steps are complete, the pilot is ready to begin. The maneuver begins by establishing a constant bank of approximately 30 degrees, then simultaneously increasing pitch attitude and applying full power. Pitch will be increased to a maximum value that will conserve just enough energy to complete the maneuver at minimum controllable airspeed. As the aircraft passes through 90 degrees of turn, this pitch attitude is maintained while the pilot begins to smoothly level the wings. Points to stress during this phase of the maneuver are coordination, torque effects, and angle of attack awareness. Turning maneuvers demand an increase in angle of attack. Combining this with climbing also leads to a loss in airspeed and further increases in angle of attack. As speed decreases, control effectiveness will decrease and requires more control input, furthering that airspeed decay. Despite these mounting factors leading the aircraft towards stall, the bank angle is decreasing during the last half of the turn. With smooth controls, a pilot can fly almost 45 degrees of heading change with the stall horn activated and still maintain all the mandates and standards of the maneuver. Smoothness of control and control coordination are truly key to performing this maneuver safely and accurately. Now to get us in the cockpit, as usual, here's UND CFI Mike Lentz. So as we're setting up, we're making sure we have at least a couple of reference lines so we can determine our progress through the maneuver. So usually a nice straight section line or a road, but as we're turning, we can at least look at it and find those 90 degree points. Now it isn't a ground reference maneuver, so we don't need to compare our track or radius or anything to the road. But we do need to make sure that we have those points because we're going to determine when we maintain constant bank or maintain constant pitch. We're going to start with constant bank, then we're going to transition to constant pitch at that 90 degree point. All right, so we're trimmed here at 105. And what we'll do is we'll smoothly roll into 30 degrees of bank, add full power, and begin our pitch up. 
smoothly increase back pressure and pitch attitude until the 90 degree point. During this portion of the turn, it is important to balance the controls to maintain coordination as the airspeed slows. Depending on density altitude, the maximum pitch that is required to complete the maneuver can vary. As density altitude increases, either due to altitude or higher temperatures, reducing the maximum pitch target will be necessary. In most cases, somewhere around 15 to 18 degrees of pitch in the Cessna 172 can usually yield favorable results. Now we're going to the left, we're going to have to be very vigilant, especially through that last half. About all the left turning tendencies, including the adverse yachts, helping us out. So here's our 90 degree point. We're going to be maintaining constant pitch and smoothly rolling out. Once 90 degrees of turn are completed, as determined by outside visual references, the pilot transitions to maintaining constant pitch and slowly decreasing bank angle. And make a note that while the goal is constant pitch, the airspeed is decreasing and will require a greater amount of back pressure to hold that constant pitch. Again, do not lock in a control position, rather lock in the pitch attitude. Accomplish this through outside visual references. However, cross-checking the attitude indicator at this point is very helpful. Decreasing the bank as the speed decreases during the last portion of the climb increases the time spent in this part of the maneuver. A good commercial applicant will utilize the last 90 degrees to maximize the remaining energy and complete the turning portion of the chandelle at minimum controllable airspeed. This demonstrates ability to adapt and manage the aircraft's energy state even during transitional stages of flight. Remember, the bank angle should not be constant during the last 90 degrees of the chandelle. Looking at the point, we're gauging our progress through the maneuver. We'll again glancing outside at our instruments to gauge for maintaining constant pitch throughout. It takes a whole lot of back pressure as the speed slows down. Coming up to the 180 degree point, lots of right rudder counteract all the adverse yaw as well as torque. Uh, we're at our 180 degree point. Smoothly lower the nose, keeping full power in. Minimize altitude loss throughout. So you think of this part just like transitioning from slow flight back into cruise. You really should lose altitude, but there is a potential when coming from that far on the backside of the power curve. So that completes our turn to the left. The PTS specifically states that the pilot recovers with minimal altitude loss. However, after practicing slow flight to both private and commercial PTS standards, this task should not pose a difficult challenge. By being patient and smoothly releasing back pressure as the aircraft accelerates to avoid a climb, the pilot will be back to trimmed and level in short order. As the pilot practices this maneuver, they may notice that the direction of the turn impacts the rudder pressure necessary for coordination. During the chandelle, turning tendencies combine with or work against adverse yaw. The greatest impact of this is during the last 90 degrees as the pilot is rolling back to level with low airspeed and high power settings. With a clockwise turning engine as seen from the flight deck, the pilot will notice that more rudder is necessary during the final portion of the left turning chandelle. The left aileron is deflected downward, increasing induced drag, causing an adverse yaw that also combines with the turning tendencies present at full power. While it is possible to make this part of the maneuver a cerebral academic exercise, the pilot should take care to develop practical visual references and combine them with kinesthetic skills to assist in determining proper aircraft coordination. With enough practice, many of the elements of the Shandell maneuver will become almost second nature to the pilot. The applicant should always strive to achieve, at a minimum, the performance standards outlined in the FAA's commercial PTS. These practical test standards include the pilot being able to exhibit knowledge of the elements related to chandelles, selecting an altitude that will allow the maneuver to be performed no lower than 1,500 feet AGL, establishes the recommended entry configuration, power, and airspeed, establishes the angle of bank at approximately 30 degrees, simultaneously applies power and pitch to maintain a smooth, coordinated climbing turn to the 90 degree point with a constant bank, begins a coordinated constant rate rollout from the 90 degree point to the 180 degree point maintaining power and a constant pitch attitude, completes rollout at the 180 degree point plus or minus 10 degrees 
just above stall airspeed and maintaining that airspeed momentarily avoiding a stall. Resume straight and level flight with minimum loss of altitude. The Chandelle is a performance-based maneuver that demands mastery of the aircraft for smooth completion and for execution within the standards of the commercial PTS. This is its practical application. Chandelles used in tactical operations or perhaps to avoid terrain in a dire situation are not the strict maneuvers defined by the FAA for pilot evaluation. They are variations, however, that do build upon the skills learned while completing the commercial Chandelle gain altitude quickly and develop a keen sense for angle of attack awareness and smooth control while in close proximity to stall. Enjoy the challenges of extracting the most performance you can out of the aircraft you fly. For all of us at you at the aerospace, remember, have fun and fly safe.